This is the Carver's Cave Biological Survey. This is the first time that anyone has looked at what organisms inhabit the subterranean lake in this side, this cave, on a systematic basis. So you're going to take water and find out your little Yes, after? I had the water sediment samples and shoreline samples uh, in the lake uh, and uh, we're just going to um, go through them very carefully and have them identified by experts if I can't identify them myself. So. All right, well good luck. Greg Brick collecting his samples to analyze under the... Yeah, I got some good... Um, uh, one of the yeah. organisms don't just occur uniformly or randomly in caves. They tend to, they tend to concentrate in certain environments and there's a lot of root mats. Ah. And that uh, the invertebrates like to hide around okay. in root mats. So it's a good place to look for them. And you're on the shore of the lake there. Yeah, so okay. now I'm going to collect a series of samples along the shoreline. Okay. Just to, so, right. wow. Yeah. Pretty tight, isn't it? Yeah. Any kids out there, do not play in this cave. That's serious stuff. Yeah, no, it's definitely... Whoa, yeah, I see what you mean. I... No, you'll have plenty of warm air to get go out. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like when our April excursion. All right, you're all the way in the main. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for these, these root mat type environments. I got some critter on the surface of the water here. Okay, you going to be able to catch them? Yes. That's what I got the microscope for. Okay. And I can only really identify some of these just to... So I can identify the species. I think most of them yeah. you would be just I know the people in the, there's very few people in the US who are capable that not only study these but are willing to actually shit, you know, do an identification for you. That's something okay. that's something extra. <laughs> okay. Um but um it, it's uh there's definitely a whole food chain in here. Uh because it starts yeah. With the organic material, leaves and the root mats, uh, and, and the vegetative material. Well, I've got a big fungus, a lot of fungus growing in here. That's, Is that good or bad? You no, know, I, I don't know. I just don't know the significance of it. Well, someone's going to eat it eventually, right? Yeah. And then, so they start at that level, the, the sap robes and the, uh, I don't think that they'll eat this decaying organic matter. Yeah. And that is usually the little the, the amphipods, the little scuds of freshwater shrimp. And then they in turn are eaten by the minnows. Ah. Uh, and oh wow, I gotta catch this guy. There's a fungus garden here, some black insect crawling on it. Ah. Get this. <laughs> um, insect tending is a good fungus garden. Or was. <laughs> now a captive of uh, Greg Brick. So, they, right. and then the fish eat those amphipods. Okay. And uh, so that it's it's like a whole food chain, but it has it is a food chain and an ecosystem that's completely in the dark. Cool. But it's dependent on our inputs of organic matter from the outside world to come in through that opening. So, uh, you know, if they if the city completely seals this, right? Then what happens is. Uh, it would be strictly dependent on the root mats coming down through the rock joints. That would be the only organic inputs, basically, unless there was something coming in through the spring water at the back end of the cave, some collo colloidal material okay. uh, coming through with the groundwater through fissures, that, that sometimes is enough to sustain some sort of minimum existence. Okay. Um, but um, as it's not, the biomass of the entire cave is, is obviously not is not very great, um, but I, kinda got, I can see these bugs just kind of moving around here. I just got to scoop up a sample. Okay. I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're insects or crustaceans. One of the two. But okay. Okay. So I got my 
samples here. Yeah, there's definitely something going on with this fungus back here. Okay. There's, I think what they have there's I think what I see is there is a beetle that is feeding on this fungus. Ah. So it's kind of like, uh, and I don't know what the fungus is growing on. I, I don't. Um, you know, there's a bunch of thugs right in front of me on the left wall here on the rocks really? and the water. Okay. I don't. Yeah, yeah, no, I got a sample from that area. Oh, all right, okay. So, okay, so I'm gonna just try to reverse and come out now. Okay, I, I'm gonna shut my video off okay. and come out myself. Okay, the left. Okay. Wow, you got a lot of samples there, bud. Yeah, I gotta. Take me a while to analyze them all with a binocular. Okay. Yes, they had, uh, I've done it, but I mail them off and attest to them. Okay. And then, and then, and then I got alcohol, okay. isopropyl, and it's like, and it's kind of up to the whim of the the taxonomic expert whether they want to go and actually do the identification for you. It's not very remunerative. <laughs> it's like no. free or nothing. Yeah, but, I mean, they're probably are, tired of that, right? Uh, I've had a categorical denial there are isopods here, and that's why I'm interested to disprove that notion. I think I see a nematode in here, but it's so small, I don't know how I'm going to even get it with this. I thought this tweezers was like way, way, way too small. Now it's starting to look like... Too big. <laughs> like, a, you know, a big, like a Tyrannosaurus ah! Rex trying to pick up, you know, something on the ground. is uh, like, <laughs> it's like smush it. Uh. Uh.